Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here then welcome my name is Jen and thanks for dropping by today. Before I get into today's video I just wanted to thank you guys so much for a thousand subscribers here on YouTube. Never in a million years did I think that I could grow this channel into anything like this and it would not be possible without any of you guys. I appreciate you guys just letting me be my authentic self here on YouTube and making my little videos and I just can't believe that there are people out there who want to watch them or just listen to me talk so I just appreciate all of you so so much. So thank you for watching, for liking, for commenting, for subscribing, all of those good things. I appreciate you a lot so from the bottom of my heart thank you guys so so much. Now a couple days ago I asked you guys on Instagram what you think I should do to kind of celebrate a thousand subscribers and one of you guys suggested that I sit down and do a little not with me a little Q&A um, so I thought I would sit down and show you guys what I'm currently working on at the moment I'm currently working on a spirited away tapestry and I've curated a little list of questions you guys have sent me on Instagram on YouTube and I'm just gonna be answering those questions for you and giving you guys a little bit of a life update as well. And before we jump into the video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all those good things. I would really appreciate it. Okay, let's go. Okay, so here's what I have so far. So I know the first question everyone is going to ask is where can I find this pattern? And I actually found this pattern on candy patterns and I will put the link in the description below. So I haven't attached it to my workstation yet. I actually just wanted to show you guys how I do that um, because I actually get quite a few questions about that on Instagram whenever I post a little progress update. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys that as well. And all of these strings up here are just like all of the colors I added in. This is just like where I tied them off. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of get those out of the way. Also another question one of you guys had for me was how do you secure tapestries once they get longer? Um, so say if my tapestry were attached here and I'm noticing that this is about <laughs> about like an inch and a half of, away from the edge of my table and it's getting longer and, and it's getting harder to tie my knots. Um, so what I would do, I would actually just pull the tape off. Like I usually secure this with tape so I would literally just take everything off and then just move it up on the edge of the table like this. So I use scotch tape to secure my tapestries and I specifically use the gift wrap tape just because of how clear it is because some tape is very not clear like it, it almost looks a little milky if you know what I mean. Um, so yeah I would just like usually when I start a tapestry my tape would be Kind of more up here but once the tapestry gets longer i would remove the tape grab a new piece and then just move the tapestry up like this and then just try and get the tape as straight as you can along your row of knots this piece of tape is way too long <laughs> but that's okay and then you're just gonna stick it right on the edge of your desk and then i'm just gonna follow that row all the way across as best as I can with the tapestry staying, staying as straight as possible. And this is also just going to help your knots stay nice and straight. And just to secure a little bit more, I'm just going to put some tape on the dowel itself. Just like so. Okay, and then I'm ready to keep working on my tapestry. So I've actually left off kind of in the middle of the row here. So that's where I'm gonna be starting off today. So this pattern is 80 base strings. I'm about 37 rows in right now. And I think I have about 33 rows left. So I'm kind of like in the halfway point here. I'm just about to add in some more of this light gray. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of slack here and just kind of secure it under the base strings here off to the side, just with a piece of tape, <laughs> just like that. And I'm just gonna do two forward knots. Uh, I really hope I don't hit this wire too much. So the floss that I am using, I'm actually using DMC Pearl Cotton size five for the base strings and for 
all of my leading strings, I'm using DMC Embroidery Floss. So the thing when you're using a lot of colors is it's kind of hard to like grab the base strings when they're so short um, because I keep grabbing the colors because all of the colors right now are just like sitting in my lap and then I just kind of grab them as I need them and then just untangle them from this mess. Oh my God. Okay, that's really tangled. <laughs> It's usually not that tangled. This was also sitting in my desk for a little while, so that's probably why. All right, that wasn't that bad, it's fine. And I'm just gonna come over with my color switch and go with the black here. It's like so. And I try and keep my row straight despite pushing up my knots every time I do a color change, because when you have a lot, your rows kind of like start to slant down a little bit. Well, mine do anyways. I also don't use like the flat alpha technique, so that's that could be a big reason why. Um, I still really want to learn how to do the the flat alpha technique, um, but we'll, we'll get there one day. <laughs> Gotta make sure that I am using the right color here. All right, so I'm gonna go in with two more light gray knots. Um, yeah, so another question I get asked a lot is what is this wooden stick thing called? And that is called a dowel and you can get them really at any craft store. I got mine at Walmart um, in the craft section. You can get them at the dollar store. Um, you can really get them from anywhere. Um, yeah, so they're, they're not too hard to find. And if you wanna know how I attached all of my base strings to the wooden dowel, I do have a tutorial on that that I will kind of leave in the top right corner for you here. So now I'm gonna switch back over to my dark gray, which is really, really tangled in all of my other colors. <laughs> there we go. So I'm just gonna go ahead with one of these guys. Um, so another question I get asked here on YouTube a lot is how do I cut my dowel? So speaking of walmart <laughs> i went over to the tool section and i grabbed this little hacksaw for like five bucks and this is what i use to cut my dowel i have like a little clamp situation for my dowel here um, and then i can just cut it off myself but of course if you are not experienced with tools and stuff then maybe get someone to help you who is okay and i'm just gonna switch back over to the black with a forward knot. And again, just always making sure that I'm pushing up on all of my previous knots. And it is a little time consuming to do that. Um, a lot of people ask me like, how long does it take me to knot? And it takes me a long time, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it takes me pretty long, um, but it's always because I'm trying to, to just like keep my edges straight. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back with my light gray. So the thing with this is I'm gonna make sure that my light gray is going in front of the dark gray since I've already used it. And that's just going to prevent my colors from getting tangled um, in the back of my tapestry. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a couple of these light gray knots. Um, another question that I got asked on Instagram is what is my favorite time of day to knot and any time oops oh, I hate it when I drop my bobbin and I have to bend over and pick it up that's literally the worst <laughs> that's one of my pet peeves um, if anyone were to ask me what's one of my bracelet pet peeves is dropping my bobbin and having to bend over and pick it up <laughs> Literally so infuriating. Um, but anyway, my favorite time of day to not would definitely be uh, like late morning, early afternoon. I don't like to not like too late in the day because I like to sit in my office where it's nice and bright. So I like to get lots of daylight um, and it's perfect for filming videos too, just the light that I get in this room. So kind of around nine in the morning, to like three in the afternoon. That's kind of like my prime time to not. Ooh, and I'm actually gonna be finishing her face here. So I can actually just go ahead with a couple more of these black knots. 
That's always so exciting. And like when I finish off like a segment of the actual design, it's, it's very satisfying to me. There we go. Wow, look at that. Amazing. Okay, and then I'm gonna switch over to this nice dark olive green color. Um, yeah, like I said, this was sitting in my drawer for a very long time. So my leading colors are a little, <laughs> A little tangled right now and I always like to keep my leading strings on bobbins uh, that way I'm just not cutting like more strings if I need them because I just I really hate doing that um, I just like using the amount that I need and keeping them on the bobbins allows me to do that it can be a little annoying and it took me a little while to get used to actually holding the bobbins in my hands um, but with practice I got faster at it um, but it did, it did take me a little while. Oh my god, I dropped <sighs> literally the worst. It doesn't help when there's so many colors just sitting in my lap and I keep knocking them down. It's, it's quite annoying, actually. All right, let's get those out of the way. Bring our black down here. It's going to do one of these and then move on to our light gray again. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Um, do you make any other crafts besides bracelets slash wall hangings? Well, I do macrame. I haven't done it in a little while, um, but I do make plant hangers, coasters, keychains, um, but I hadn't for a while because my province was actually back in lockdown for a little while and I couldn't get to the dollar store to grab the supplies that I needed to make more like guitar hangers and plant hangers and stuff. Um, oh yeah, I make guitar hangers too and like ukulele hangers. Um, so, but I couldn't get like the brass rings I needed um, cause I get them like in the craft section um, at the dollar store, but you couldn't get to the craft section in the dollar store because non-essential retail was blocked off so like you couldn't go buy any clothes you couldn't buy like stuff for your house or your your kitchen you could only really buy groceries which is fair but at the same time it was like for six weeks or something it was like a month for sure <laughs> um so i haven't done macrame in a while um i've never been able to like crochet or anything like that um that's definitely not my strong suit um, but when I was younger, I was really into, what's it called? Like latch, latch rug hooking. I think that's what it's called. Like where you have like the, the little pieces of yarn, like that big, and you have like your little hook and you put them through the plastic grid and you follow the, like the cross stitch looking pattern thing. And then you get this cute design. Yeah. I used to do that when I was younger. Um, and I learned how to embroider when I was younger. I don't really remember anything about it now. <laughs> um, but other than that, I don't really do any like crafts. Um, but I do like sing and I play piano. Um, I actually went to school for music, um, music industry, arts and performance. Um, so as far as like other artistic hobbies go, um, I do really like to sing as well as make friendship bracelets. And my fiance and I actually have a YouTube channel where we have a few covers. If you guys wanna check it out, I will put the link in the description. Okay, I'm just gonna do a few of these white knots. It's always so scary, like just, just going off on these little tangents while I'm nodding because sometimes I don't realize what I'm doing. But I think, I think we're doing okay so far. So as you'll notice, um, every time I use a color, I'll kind of move it up out of the way. And then I'll grab the previous color I use, and then I just pull it back down into my lap. And that's just going to prevent all of my strings from getting tangled uh, in the back of my tapestry. And so now I'm actually going to start using this lighter green. And this is just going to help give her shirt some shadows and highlights and really make everything pop give it some depth so again i'm just gonna tuck this green just behind all of my base strings but in front of all of my other leading colors 
I'll just lift up this piece of tape I used before and just stick that underneath. <laughs> and that will be secure enough for me to pull this over and then just do a forward knot like that. Ooh, that's such a fun green. I love that. It's almost like yellow. It's really nice though. Really cool. Really like neon olive green. And there you go. And then I can just pull my white down and then just keep going with my pattern. Um, so yeah, another question I get asked a lot is how do I keep my edges straight? Um, and I'm using the straight edge technique uh, which is where on the far left bass string you only do backward forward knots and on the far right string you only do forward backward knots. Um, I hope I said that right. Sometimes I get all mixed up um, with the directions of the knots. Um, but I do that and also with my tapestries I always make sure that my lark heads knots at the top are spaced out um, evenly, just spaced out in a way where I have room for all of my knots to sit together comfortably. Because sometimes if you make them too tight up here, by the time you get down here, you're gonna notice it start to kind of expand like that, or vice versa. If you make them too far apart, you might notice your tapestry start to go like that. So making sure that your, your starting row at the top is spaced evenly is honestly key to having your edges straight for your whole tapestry. So and I hope that made sense. Um, another question I got asked is, what is the best way to finish off the back? So when I'm finishing off the back of my tapestries, what I do is just tie off all of the colors I've added in. So like all of this slack here, um, I would cut it a bit shorter, um, tie it off um, to each other. It's kind of hard to explain when I'm not doing it, but um, here, maybe, maybe I'll show you an example. So this is a little Christmas Pikachu I made um, back in 2020. But on the back here, you can see all the colors I've added in. I've actually just done kind of like a double knot situation, just tied them off to each other. And usually I would just take a little bit of fabric glue and just kind of dab it on each of the knots just so that they're not coming undone um, if you're being rough with the tapestry. So that's how I finish off the backs of my bracelet. Wow, I tried to explain that and I did a horrible job. So uh, sorry we got a little sidetracked there. So again, I'm just gonna stick the white up there, bring the green down out of the way. And then I can grab my black. And again, just making sure that it's in front of the colors I've already used that are in front of that knot. And then just going ahead with my pattern. So I guess I have a little bit of a life update for you guys. Um, as some of you guys may know, um, Dylan and I are engaged and we've been trying to plan our wedding for the past little while. Um, turns out we're not very good at it. We're not very good planners and <laughs> we have been procrastinating a lot. But I went to this secondhand bridal boutique with my mom over the weekend and I found my wedding dress, which is so crazy. It was, um, it was a very weird experience because I remember watching shows like Say Yes to the Dress on TLC and some of those brides were so horrible and they just made the experience seem so scary and expensive and awful um, but it was super chill like I just went in I was like this is my size and she's like well you can look through here and like we we don't order anything because everything's secondhand right so I tried on like six or seven dresses I want to say um, but there's this one I can't say anything about it because I know Dylan's probably gonna watch this video um, but I was even debating on like not telling him that I even got a dress, but as soon as I got home, I just like spilled everything because I was so excited. I was like, I got my wedding dress today. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's so pretty. It was just one of those 
one of those things I came out of the change room and I saw myself in the mirror and I was like, oh my God, I look like a bride. And it was crazy. And I can't wait to show you guys um, pictures of it, at, like once we get married, obviously. Um, but that's not gonna be until like September. So you're gonna have to wait a little bit, but I thought it was exciting. <laughs> I thought it was exciting news and I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, so it's, it's getting altered right now. It's gonna take a little while. And since I'm not getting married for a while, it's it's not like a big rush right now anyways. Um, Cause obviously they're really, really busy. The summer is a very popular time to get married, especially with like all the restrictions being lifted and people are like unpausing all of their plans. Cause I know a lot of people who have been engaged like basically for the whole duration of 2020 and they've had to put all of their wedding plans on hold because of COVID, obviously. So that's a big bummer. <laughs> um, but now that people are getting vaccinated, I've had my first vaccine, um, felt fine for the most part, felt really, really tired and my arm was sore, but like, that's about it. Um, I was also able to visit my grandmother because she is fully vaccinated. So that's also what we did um, after I got my wedding dress. We went and visited her because she lives out of town. I don't get to see her very often. Um, so that, that was nice. That, that was my fun weekend. And it's honestly the most like eventful weekend I've had in probably <laughs> over a year, like since COVID started. Like I was thinking about it, like I have not been in a restaurant since Janu January of 2020. Like unless I'm just like running in to grab something to go, like fast food or something, but I've not sat in a restaurant and ordered food <laughs> for over a year. Like how crazy is that? It's just, it's things that you don't think about. This is insane. Like this is so tangled. I don't recommend just shoving all of your projects in a drawer. If you're looking for tips on what to do and what not to do with with um, alpha tapestries, this this would be a thing not not to do. Okay, I'm just coming with this light brown. Okay, so for my straight edges, kind of what I was talking about earlier. Uh, so since this is the far right bass string, I'm going to do a forward backward knot. And I'm just gonna do that every time I make my knot on the far right. And then every time I make my knots on the far left, it's gonna be a backward forward knot. That's just gonna help keep my edges nice and clean. So now I'm actually gonna be doing a color switch right at the beginning of this row. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tuck that back there and just kind of push that up with my thumb, get all of my base strings kind of taut like that, kind of get my tension nice and good, make sure everything's straight. And I'm actually gonna be coming over with the black string so I'm gonna pull this down, move this light brown out of the way, and then I'm gonna grab my black string, make sure everything is not sitting over top of it, and I'm gonna do my forward backward knot just to stay with my straight edges and not pull anything too tight either. Just like that. And then now, since I'm going to the left, I'm gonna be doing backward knots all the way across and then moving all of my co colors out of the way to the left instead of to the right. So then I'm just gonna come back in with my light brown, with my backward knots here, just like that. And then I can just continue with my pattern like I normally would. 
Um, I'm trying to think of what else is new in my life. I mean, not much, to be honest. Um, I mean, life has been kind of weird. I was working at a retail job for for a couple months. I want to say like maybe eight months. Um, and then I got this job offer to go to this other job and I worked there for like three weeks and like the pay was so good. Like it was just such a, a better situation or so I thought um, because they ended up letting me go with like no notice, no like, I don't know. Like they didn't even like train me properly. Like, I don't know. It was just a very weird situation. So I'm currently between jobs right now. Um, so honestly, just having this YouTube channel and having my Twitch channel is really like, it's really what keeps me going every day. So again, I just want to thank all of you guys so, so much for tuning into my videos and giving me your time of day. Like I never would have imagined being in this position, just having people listen to me talk or having people like my art or want to learn how to make things for me. I don't know. It's, I, I'm just, I'm very thankful, very grateful. I'm trying to turn a stressful situation into a successful situation. Oh, I just made that up. If that's not a thing, I'm going to, I'm going to trademark that stressful into successful. You know, like, let's just not the stress away. <laughs> not with me, everybody. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Um, honestly, though, real talk, my Instagram <laughs> has been very dry lately. And when I say my Instagram's been dry, I mean, like, my own personal feed. I have not been posting on Instagram a lot lately. Like, I've been working on commissions and stuff behind the scenes. Um, but I have honestly not been motivated to post on Instagram, um, which is kind of weird for me because, because that's, that's like where I first started to grow with my, with my bracelets in the first place. But the thing with Instagram is it's, it's something you always hear, but once you really start to internalize it and start to experience that that pressure that you put on yourself like because that's just it like I'm the only one putting pressure on myself to make this content and I'd feel like it would have to be like perfect and it, it's all just like what I want you guys to see and a lot of it just doesn't feel real to me like look at my desk right now like it is so torn up and like that's just for me pulling up the tape and it looks like shit. and on Instagram like I feel like I can't just post what I want to post like if it's if if like if I wanted to post this I'd have to put it on like a nice white background with like nice lights and stuff for for it to even get like a little bit of attention you know what I mean like it just seems so fake and so curated and I know a lot of that pressure just comes from myself and I just don't like it so I just kind of distant long story short I just kind of distanced myself from Instagram because it was giving me weird it was just making me feel weird and not good about myself um, so I'm, I'm really trying to lean more into my YouTube channel so if there's any videos that you guys uh, want to see something I haven't made yet um, then definitely leave some suggestions down in the comments. I would love to hear some of your guys' suggestions. Uh, someone on Instagram suggested that I start uh, making patterns from my subscribers to-do list, and I absolutely love that idea. So if you want me to make something from your to-do list or a specific pattern you want me to make, then you can leave your uh, account usernames below and check them out or you can add me um, you can add me on bracelet book uh, my username is not LTO um, I don't go on there very often uh, but when I do I just kind of accept all of the friend requests so 
you can easily find me there and I can find you there. But yeah, if there's any tapestries you think I should make, definitely let me know because I'm always looking for inspiration. And that's another thing. It's like sometimes I find I don't really just want to sit down and, and make whatever. Like sometimes I have to be really inspired to make something like the Spirited Away tapestry. I've had this saved on my Pinterest for maybe like a year now. And I've, I've wanted to make it for so long that one day I just decided I was gonna do it, and I did. <laughs> so go, go me. So yeah, I'm just gonna make sure this light green is going underneath this black just to keep everything nice and flat. Go ahead with my light green. And I know I'm not really explaining very much right now. Um, I'm just using the alpha technique uh, for making friendship bracelets to create this tapestry. Uh, but I believe I got through all the questions that you guys sent me. Um, but yeah, if you guys ever have any questions about bracelets or life or anything, you can always leave them down in the comments and I will try and answer them as best as I can. <laughs> So now we can start to see her striped shirt a little bit more. And I'm so excited to actually see like all of these shadows come to life once we make a bit more of the pattern. I am making a full time lapse video for this tapestry. So you will be able to see the whole process. Um, it's just this little snippet will be in real time. I'm never sure if you guys like watching the real time videos um i i feel like sometimes i get a little rambly it's either i get rambly or i don't say anything at all <laughs> because i'm just trying not to mess up but i haven't actually messed up yet i'm, I'm pretty proud of myself um knock on wood because um i really don't want to mess up now <laughs> especially now that i've said that okay, and i'm just gonna finish off with this light gray Gloss that I'm using. I tried to write down all the color codes before I started, but then I gave up on that very quickly. Uh, so I do apologize about that. Um, I did post um, a picture on Instagram of the color palette I was using for this though. So you can always check that out over there. And I will also link that in the description for you. And I think I will just stop there before this video ends up being way too long. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I haven't done a Q&A for a really long time. And I also just realized that both of my Q&A videos have featured spirited away pieces. And I swear I did not do that on purpose. <laughs> But if you did enjoy this video, then be sure to give it a like, leave a comment, subscribe. You can also check out my YouTube channel for all the other videos I've made. I have lots of time lapses, tutorials, challenges. You can check them all out over there. And thank you guys again so much for a thousand subscribers here. I really appreciate all of you. And be sure to leave a comment of what you would like to see in the next video. I always appreciate getting ideas from you guys. You guys have way better ideas than I do. So be sure to let me know what you'd like to see from me next. And with that, I'm gonna go play some Animal Crossing, maybe get ready to stream a little bit. And if you're ever interested in watching me stream, I will leave my Twitch link in the description below. All right, guys, I hope you have your favorite snack today and I hope you drink lots of water and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.